it's like we call the power nap. You take just like a shot of caffeine and espresso because it takes about 20 minutes in your system to kick in. So you have your 20 minute nap when you wake up. You have the caffeine in your body and you have this little rest. Uh, that's quite powerful. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so wonderful to hear this from you because this is what I do. And I was like, is it wrong? Is it right? But it is valid, folks. Yeah. And I also, said so. And I need to tell my husband, three hour naps are not a thing. <laughs> so no, okay. Okay. Can that's you no stop longer with a nap, that, please? <laughs> Hey, hey, and welcome to The 40s Formula, your go-to place for insightful discussions on navigating the 40s and thriving in this transformative decade. We're your hosts, Jasmine and Amanda, two women that are passionate about exploring the challenges and adventures that come with turning 40 and what lies ahead. Hi, Helen, we're so glad you can make it here today. Hi, guys. I'm so happy to be here with oh, you. Thank you for joining us. So sleep is a top of, topic of contention in our house. It's like who's had the most sleep, who's more tired. And I know for me personally, if I don't get eight hours of sleep or more, I feel like shit and I'm a total bitch. So why is sleep so important? And why does it impact not only our physical body, but also our mental health as well? Okay. Um, well, sleep, it's... It's actually it's the it's the most important things you can do um, for your health, like so physical health, mental health. Uh, so it plays a huge part. Uh, physically, this is our, during our sleep. This is where our body uh, repairs. Um, you know. Um, the muscle repairs, the cells repairs, um, we restore our energy during the sleep. So all these things happen during the deep sleep. And then emotionally, uh, this is where as well uh, during the REM sleep, uh, memory consolidation happened. So basically all the things you have learned during the day um, get reorganized in your brain um, and help you to process things and you know remembering things for the next day and things like that. So sleep play a massive role you know, a uh, thing in your, in how, in our body and emotional state, but um, it plays a role in, in everyday life, in our lifestyle, our relationship with our partner, with, you know, with our kids, with our friends uh, at work, with our productivity, um, with our, you know, how mood swings, everything is related to uh, a good night's sleep, basically. What factors can affect sleep? Many. So, so first of all, like medical point of view, like if you have like sleep apnea, for instance, like people like this who have like, not they don't have a good breathing at night. Um, so they, and they snore a lot. This can really affect their sleep. So they have to go see uh, check a, a doctor for that. Then you have illness. Obviously, if you if you're sick, you're not going to sleep well. Uh, if you take medicine, drugs, you know things like that. Um, then stress, stress impact our sleep, our lifestyle, uh, what we eat how we exercise, if we do or not. Um, uh, do we get enough daylight? You know, um, uh, kids. <laughs> kids <laughs> oh, yeah. and Presents sleep. and age. Um, and as women, our almonds, really. It's, it's, it's actually for us as women, it's not, it's not easy because our sleep is never perfect. Naturally, our body uh, goes through a different cycle. So we can't get a good night's sleep every day of the month. And we'll just have to be aware of that. When we have a period, our sleep um, get disturbed, our uh, body temperature rise up, so which often wake us like wake up in the middle of the night. Then there's pregnancy, which also can affect our sleep. And then there's premenopause. So it's just like, it never ends for us. Yeah. There's always something. Um, but that's, yeah, that's the key factor. And I would say the most important one as well is your body clock sleep regularly. People uh, don't realize that if they don't go to sleep uh, at night at the same time every night and wake up at the same time, it will really affect your circadian rhythm. And that is, a, a, it's a big one because you need to build a, what we call sleep drive during the day. So if you go to bed at a different time, uh, your body just doesn't build enough sleep drive and it's like all dysregulated. It doesn't understand when you should be going to sleep. Um, so that's, that's an important one as well. And again, what you're saying sounds so familiar to what I'm going through with sleep training, right? So mm -hmm. I have an 11-week-old, and we call it sleep pressure. 
Yeah. Right. So you have to build enough sleep pressure for yeah. that baby to understand that he's got to go to sleep and stay to sleep. You know, and if you don't do, you know, for for the babies, obviously, if you don't follow the routine and feed and stay active during the right times of day, then you won't build the sleep pressure. Same thing for adults. I always yeah. say sleep training is a great thing to go through as a mother because it reminds you to really keep, take care of your own sleep hygiene as well. Exactly. And it's so funny how we we all want our kids to sleep well. We all we can all agree on that one. But for whatever reason, we don't think the same things should apply to us. Uh, you know, it's, it's just because also how society have been um, picturing sleep, you know, the waste of time, uh, you have to be more productive. Um, you know, if you rest in the day, you can be seen as a bit of a lazy person. So it's all these things like sleep when we're dead. Yeah, so sleep it's when you're really dead. Well, that'll come earlier. Brain. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sleep was always been like, you know, that's the last thing on the list, you know. Um, so it's... Things are changing, which is good. Um, but yeah, I think many people still have this thing in there, you know, on top of, you know, at the back of their head. But yeah, you know, if I I could cut a bit on my sleep and I do squeeze more work or, you know, spend more time, you know, watching things or w- whatever it is. Right. Um, but yeah, things are changing, which is good. Oh, yeah. Not for me. Like I know sort of come 9, 9.30, TV's going off. Even if we're midway through a movie, I'll make my husband switch it off because I'm like, we need to get to bed now because I do really prioritise sleep. For me, I, like I mentioned at the start, you know, I know how I feel when I don't get enough. So I really want to make sure that I am getting the amount that I need. So I read that there's a 40% higher chance of women having insomnia over the course of their lifetime in comparison to men. And, you know, that just seems like quite a staggering yeah, number, doesn't is. it? And I was wondering, like, how can women who are really suffering from things like insomnia or sleep disturbances help themselves in making sure that they get a better night's sleep? Okay. Well, and the thing is, women needs 20 minutes more sleep than men. So I knew it. So that's the thing as well. 20 you know, minutes, I'll um, take it. That's my nap. There's no more mental activation for us with like multitasking, mental load. And like, we just carry so much that we actually need more rest. Um, so there's different kind of, with my clients, I've got different kind of issues. Like women that struggle to fall asleep at night, mm-hmm. busy mind, stress. Women that fall asleep quickly, but then wake up around 3 a.m and then can't seem to come back to sleep. And then I've got clients that they do have seven hours of sleep, but they still feel tired the mm-hmm. next day. So a thing as well, when we talk about sleep, yes, we talk about like getting between seven and nine hours, but the quality is what is almost more important. So that's why I keep like telling my client, numbers, okay, you know, of course we don't want you to get five or six hours, but if you don't get enough deep sleep, REM sleep, you're gonna feel crap the next day. That's, that's the reality of it because you definitely need at least minimal, I'll say, an hour of deep sleep if you between one hour and one and two hours, that's ideal. And same from REM sleep, around two hours of REM sleep. And if you don't get that, and if you're constantly on light sleep, you can you can actually sleep for eight hours and be a light sleep most of the most of the night. You're not gonna feel good. So that's an important thing. And so how do we get good deep sleep for us women? I would say good sleep start from the moment you wake up. Mm. Don't expect to sleep well at night if you don't do the right thing during the day. You know, it's like many people go through uh, the day doing their things, they don't think too much, and then they want to go to they go to bed and be like, okay, now I'm switch off. Well, no, it doesn't really work like that. For some people it does, you know, <laughs> they're the lucky one, they're a good sleeper. But for us, it means that going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time, even on weekends. Uh, that's oh, why that's we have, <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the hardest part. That's why we've got, we call what we have like the Sunday insomnia yeah. or the weekend jet lag, because we tend to go to bed much later. And then, you know, we sleep in in the morning and our body clock, you know, start to switch. So it's hard then on Sunday to go back to your 9.30 mm. if you've been going at 11.30 on Friday and Saturday night. So no. So try to keep it um, the same schedule. And I will say, even if you go to bed later, which is totally fine, we all have a life, try to wake up at the same time, which, I mean, it works if you have kids, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that was maybe my question. I, I was like, like, yeah, no, regardless do, of bedtime, the morning do. is the so same. So if you're really tired, then you could definitely have a little nap. But yeah, so try it regularly with that. Um, and then it's like, move your body. Like just movement, people don't move enough. Uh, especially like um, some, you know, some with working from home, which is great because you can, yeah, some people be like, oh, I can squeeze some, I can squeeze in some um, exercise during lunchtime. 
but many don't. Yeah. They don't even walk to their office. Yeah. So they actually like, you know, stay inside and don't move enough. The body, they don't get to, uh, bright lights in the morning, go outside, take the sun, don't use your, don't wear your glasses, your sunglasses, because it's going to block that. So just making sure you get enough. It's healthy. I mean, you know, as much as you can, don't eat, you know, heavy meal at night, spicy food. Again, Spicy food depends on some culture. Some culture, you used to eat spicy food. It's not going to do much to you, you know. But what you want is your body to really do its job during the night, which is restoring. Like, it doesn't want to be uh, processing, like, your meats you have been eating at night and things like that too late, you know. So you want to give him the job is just, like, restoring the body. Um, so, and when it comes to, yeah, stress. I wanted to go into stress because um, a big a big reason why people don't sleep well as well is stress. So we're trying to address stress during the day. Because if you wait at night, it's always like this when you're about to lie down and everything's come up. So we're trying to address stress during the day, um, whatever, like meditation, breathing exercise, journaling, writing down things, whatever, but just don't keep things at night. Um, yeah, that's, you know, uh, that's more or less, I would say that's the sleep, sleep hygiene that we're trying to, to get, avoiding alcohol, at night, especially, not too much caffeine. I'm trying to tell my client not after 12 p.m. Again, there's people that sleep very, very well with like an espresso at 10 p.m. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's why that's all. That's why I'm saying like sleep hygiene. Um, it's great. It's a good baseline, basic thing. But not everything applies to everyone. You need to know, you know, how alcohol definitely not good for anyone to be honest uh you know some people will be like yeah it helps me to fall asleep yes you have this you know sedative thing but it would definitely um um damage your deep sleep you know interfere with like the quality of your deep sleep so you don't want that you're not going to feel refreshed the next day um so yeah that's pretty much the good sleep hygiene that you can you know do it's funny because you mentioned that, you know, eating too, like a bigger meal too close mm. to bedtime can disrupt your sleep. And I've definitely noticed that if I do eat closer to bedtime, like say I've gone out, my HRV drops yeah. drastically. Yeah. So, you know, I can definitely feel that. So sometimes, obviously, it's beyond your control. But yeah, I definitely feel rubbish if I eat too close to yeah. bedtime. Hey Amanda, what's more challenging than finding good quality nutritious food for your family? Probably juggling life in your 40s. Okay, yes you're right there, but do you know how you can make it a whole lot easier? The Meat Club. The Meat Club is the premier source for top quality Australia and New Zealand produce right here in Singapore. I love their subscription model. It's an easy way to get high quality protein delivered direct to my door. And it's packed at the source, delivered via an unbroken cold chain, so there's no middlemen and there's more savings in the good quality meat. And guess what? We've got a special treat for our listeners. As a first-time customer of the Meat Club, you can save yourself $12 with no minimum spend. Just use code TFF12 on their website at www.themeatclub.com.sg. And don't forget to follow them on Instagram at themeatclubsg for recipes, updates, and special offers. And now, back to the show. And HRV, just for listeners that aren't familiar, that's your heart rate variability, and you want that as high as possible. And similarly, you want your resting heart rate overnight to be as low as possible. And that's why I'm so glad that you brought up, Helen, the effect of alcohol, because there is no you know, minimum dose. Once you introduce, introduce alcohol, it is messing with your resting heart rate. It is messing with your sleep. So, you know, there is no kind of safe minimum. It's just try to eliminate as much as you can. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it just, it just being aware of that thing. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot the other one is obviously electronics, but it's, it's a funny one um, because obviously if you have electronics at night with your phone and things like that, it can stop the production. It delays the production of melatonin. Um, but also I would say for stress and things like that, people that are on their phone and they're watching news and things like that, it, it does have an impact. Um, but it's, it's difficult for us women, especially if, if we have children, we will have what we call like um, a bedtime procrastination mm -hmm. because all this time that we really haven't had for ourselves, we just want to have that before going to bed. And I will say that is the artist to, you have to be strict with yourself. Yeah. You know, it's all about like, you know, um, controlling yourself and be like, okay, what do I want? Because in the moment you'll be like, oh, I would be so nice to watch one more episode or to chill on my phone, but think of the next day, yeah. you know? And especially if you have young kids, it's, 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 it's a short part of your time, just being aware of that. 
uh, you will have more time when then, you know, you can sleep better and everything. But uh, it's really like controlling ourselves with this kind of thing. You mentioned naps and I'm keen to find out, is there a right way or, an, or even a wrong way to nap? Uh, right. So, so nap has a bad um, reputation um, in, you know, in, in the sleep, uh, sleep industry. So for me, this is where I will necessarily bring, I don't know if I can do it, human design there. It really depends on um, who you are. Mm. And uh, some people, for nap, for napping for them is very restorative and it's really good, actually. It will help them with their sleep. And for some people, it will actually destroy their sleep. So when we talk about nap, is we're trying to keep it to 20 minutes max. You want to stay in stage one and two of like sleep. You don't want to go into stage three of like deep sleep because if you wake up around that time, you're going to feel groggy. It's going to be awful feeling for you and that will um, affect your sleep drive as well. So you don't want to go there. So you just try to keep it for 10 to 20 minutes if you can early. I would say between 12 and 2, depending on what time you go to bed, obviously. Um, and then if you really need it and you drink caffeine, it's like we call the power nap. You take just like a shot of caffeine and espresso because it takes about 20 minutes in your system to kick in. So you have your 20 minute nap. And when you wake up, when you wake up, you have the caffeine in your body and you have this little rest. Uh, that's quite powerful. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are. I, this is so wonderful to hear this from you because this is what I do. And I was like, is it wrong? Is it right? But it is valid, folks. Yeah, yeah, Ellen so. said so. And I need to tell my husband, three hour naps are not a thing. <laughs> so <laughs> no, yeah. Can that's you no stop with that, please? <laughs> no, no, no. Three hours now, yeah, definitely. We, what yeah. we want to avoid is really doing... I mean, you could do a full sleep cycle. It's almost better to do a full sleep cycle of 90 minutes than being waking up in the middle of a deep sleep. Mm. You'll feel better with a full sleep cycle. But if you have, if you struggle to fall asleep at night or you wake up in the middle of the night, that's probably not a good idea. I definitely, I feel weird after napping. So if I take a nap in the day, like if I didn't have decent sleep at night time, I really, like I wake up, I'm disorientated, I'm groggy. I'm like, what is going on? This just, so I always say, I just can't nap. I'm not a napping kind of person. Whereas my husband, if he's not had a great night's sleep, he'll take a few hours in the middle of the day. <laughs> if he hasn't had a great night, he'll just throw that night's sleep right in the middle of the day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hey, Amanda, do you know of a really easy way to give your kids some good gut bacteria? I do indeed. I'm giving my family a Keezy Wellness Elderberry Boost. They come in these little sachets. You just rip them open, pour it right in your mouth. That sounds like fun. And I bet I could add that to their smoothies and some Greek yogurt too. And what I love about a Keezy is that you can take it any time of day and there's a product for all ages, even my 12-week-old little guy. Akisi believe that food is medicine, so you know the products are clean and have no gums and fillers. They also take a science-forward approach and include pre- Post, probiotics, as well as polyphenols. And the best thing is, you can get 15% off full price items with free delivery when you use code 40s at checkout for any purchases in Singapore from their website, akizywellness.com. And don't forget to check out their new Akizi Berry and Akizi Tropical flavors too. Now back to the chat. Exactly but you know, that. that's the thing as well. I'm, I'm not a nap person. I hate that. And I went through insomnia for so many years that I needed to nap. You don't have to nap. You can just rest, you know, and it will give you the same thing. You don't have to actually really sleep. You can just like lie down for like 10, 15 minutes, either listening to like calming music or just the the point is not to be on your phone or whatever, because you still, you know, activate your brain and everything. So, you, so you're not resting, yeah. you know, if you're on your phone or like watching TV, this is not resting. Mm. But if you just lie down or sit on your sofa, do breathing exercise, listen to something, or just quiet your mind for a little bit, that will be so beneficial for you. You don't actually have to nap, you know, because I get that. I hate to nap as well. I just, I hate the feeling. Yeah. You mentioned human design. Now, I'm intrigued. I know <laughs> absolutely nothing of it other than what you mentioned right before we started recording. So for people like me who don't know what it is, can you uh, share a little bit of insight Okay, so human design basically it's um it's an ancient an ancient thing. We we'll take uh, the Kabbal, the astrology, uh, the I Ching, and the um, Hindu uh, chakra system, and this is mixed with uh, modern science of like biology, um, quantum physics, and so basically human design give us um, your energetic blueprint. And it can give us a good insight of your personality, how you make decisions, um, how your body functions. Um, and 
it's just I, I use it in my practice because when I there's different type you know in human design I can just see how a person operates and how that person can be living in alignment with their true nature so I use that base to really then be able to coach them um, to be the best self basically and so what are the main types in human design like what are the different you know like we all know astrological zodiac signs right like what are the types of human design so there's the generator and the manifesting generator so which is about 70 percent of the population then there's the projector 20 percent the manifesta nine percent and reflector very raw like one percent of the population so the generator and manifesting generator are like the energy being in our society. They are the one, they are the builder, like they are the worker. They have access to a constant flow of energy within themselves. Um, as I you know, mentioned previous to you, they have to do things that like them up. Obviously, we all do things that we don't want to do during the day, but generally you need to be doing things you love. And when you do things you love, you have access to like so much energy, like a lot of energy. Uh, a projector, manifester, and reflector, they're not they're what we call no energy beings. So basically, the energy really fluctuates throughout the day. So they can be feeling very energetic in the morning, and then the energy drop for a couple of hours, and the energy comes back. Um, and they need more rest. They need to really, really prioritize their rest and sleep a bit more than uh, generator and manifesting genera. Doesn't mean that generator and manifesting genera are not tired. They're definitely tired as well, but there's a different approach to uh, sleep and rest, especially when it comes to a uh, nighttime routine. A generator and manifesting generator, they need to use all the energy before going to bed. So otherwise they will be lying there looking at the ceiling and they will take an hour to fall asleep. So mm -hmm. I have many clients like this and it comes from also childhood because their parents would tell them, you go to bed at that time. But they haven't used all the energy, they're not tired. You go there, they lie down, and it takes them a long time to fall asleep. And they think it's normal, and they become like adults, and they can't fall asleep, you know, quickly. It's because they went to bed too early. They haven't built enough sleep drive during the day. So that's, for these people, um, a wind-down routine is not necessary. It's not necessary. Like, you can have it. It's great if it makes you feel good, if you enjoy doing, fine. But you don't need that to calm, to calm down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's much better that you use all your energy and you go to bed when you're feeling exhausted. Mm -hmm. Wait until you feel tired, really tired, and then you will, you know, fall asleep like this. That sounds like me. My husband um, has this habit. We'll get into bed. I think for him it takes some time to wind down. For me, I'll get into bed and as I'm drifting off, he'll say something to me or, you know, like, wake me up. And I'm like, that was just so quick. Like, we just lay down and I'm like, I'm tired. And he goes, you fall asleep too quickly. I mean, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I don't think there is a too quickly. I think that's the yeah, ideal, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think it's ideal. Uh, we, uh, a lot of like sleep experts will tell you that if you fall asleep in less than five minutes, it means that you're exhausted, you're sleep deprived. Um, yes and no. Because I do think, even I've seen it with my client, the generator, my fisting generator, they fall asleep very quickly. Mm. And if they sleep well and they feel good the next day, it's all good. Yes. Yeah. Now, when it's not healthy, it's for projector, manifester, um, manifester and reflector. We need, because I'm a projector, so we, we need a, a wind down period because we can't come from being high energy. Like if I go to an event at night, I can't switch off straight away. It mm. will take me at least like 45 minutes, an hour to just calm down and be able to then um, go to sleep. So for those three types, if we go to bed exhausted, it's a bad sign for us. It means we've been pushing way too much during the day mm -hmm. and our deep sleep is not going to be as good. So for us, it's crucial that we manage our energy during the day and to go to bed not feeling exhausted. Uh, that's why there's so many burns out for like projector, manifestor and reflector. We try to keep up with the rest of the population, but we're not built in the same way. So it's not it's not better. It's not worth. It's just we use our energy in a different way. So once we're aware of that, we, we're actually very efficient in the way we use our energy. Um, but for us, resting, napping is good. We need that. We actually need to have this time in the middle of the day where we can just slow down. Um, it's really beneficial for us, and it's not gonna um, it's not gonna uh, disturb our secret rhythm later, as if you do for a generator or manifesting generator. And often, generator manifesting generator doesn't necessarily feel the need to nap mm. or the the rest. You know, some do, but it's not a common you know it's not a common thing for them. 
I feel like I'm probably one of those who... Yeah, I would say probably yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. And your husband is probably a projector. Yes, right. <laughs> <Sounds like it. laughs> you mentioned that you suffered from insomnia. Um, is that the reason why you got into the field of sleep? Yes. You know, I feel like sleep has always been... Bad sleep has always been part of my life. Uh, so I started having insomnia when I was like 13 years old. And at the time, my parents like, you know, sent me to see my GP. They, at the time, doctors didn't have much knowledge around yeah. sleep. So they didn't really know what to tell me apart from offering like sleeping pings later in my 20s, not at the age of 13, obviously. They were a bit, oh, I went to see a psychologist just trying to figure out, but no one really understood sleep. We were not talking about sleep at that time. So, but again, when you're young, it's okay. You have naturally, you have, you're young, you have energy. So um, I was just so used to uh, waking up in, at 3 a.m., not be able to fall back asleep. Um, and then in my early 20s, same. And I started to um, go see different alternative doctors. I'm just like, I'm going to try everything. It's been a, like a 10 years of trial and error, see what works, what doesn't work. Um, and I was so passionate about the topic because I was reading about sleep. Sleep was constantly part of me that I remember being pregnant with my first child in London and be telling my husband, I need to do something about sleep. Uh, because no one is talking about sleep. Everyone's talking about exercising. Everyone's eating healthy. I've seen all my friends that like, very good at that, but they don't mind about not sleeping well. And but they can't be as perfect like their like their diet can't be as good because they're just not sleeping well. So they're not making the right decision. Did you know they, they want they crave more sugar, things like that. Exercises, all these things, the bolt the muscle can't repair and all that thing. So um, when I was in London, pregnant with my first child, I went back to study insomnia, sleep disorder. Um, and I just, you know, I loved it. And then I moved to New York and I I always thought sleep is not the problem. Sleep is a consequence. The, it comes from, I, I'm patient about understanding the roots of the problem, you know. Um, so that's why when I got to New York, I decided to uh, train as a health coach, not to become a health coach. I knew I wasn't, but I wanted the knowledge. I wanted to understand how foods impact, how like, you know, the holistic approach to sleep. That's why I call my business Sleep Body Mind, because everything is linked together. You know, sleep is just the consequences. And we need to understand how the body and the mind function together to be able to sleep well. Um, so, yeah, I've always, it always felt like a curse to me not being sleeping well. I was like, why am I the only one? Like, I've cried many, many days, you know, of like, I just want to sleep. Mm. But, you know, again, this is now <laughs> part of like, I don't, you know, I use it for my, for my business. I'm passionate about it. I want to bring awareness of the importance of sleep for people. And I love that you said, you know, that you, you knew fit people, you were meeting fit people who, you know, had their workouts good, had their diets good, and just weren't sleeping. Because that happens in my line of work all the time, right? We have people come in and say, you know, I'm super healthy. I'm at F45 five times a week, and I eat, you know, nutrition kitchen meals, and everything is super. Oh, but I sleep four hours a night. And I was like, I'm going to stop you right there. Because that tells me that you are not healthy. You know, you're not giving your body time to grow muscle, which is what you need for long-term health. You're not giving your food time to digest, which is what you need for optimal gut health. It's like, when you tell me you're not sleeping, the first thing I hear is a red flag for your long-term wellness. And I think that it has become weirdly a badge of honor to not sleep. Yes, and we need yeah. to all work together to rewrite the script that it is in fact a really red glaring problem. Oh, totally. And that, that's the thing. How many entrepreneurs have heard, oh, I'm only sleep four or five hours and I'm able to... The people don't realize the impact on the long, the long term impact. Yes, we can all we can all sleep only five hours for like a few years. We can do that. We actually can do that. But what we don't realize is all the things that is affecting, you know, uh, obviously, when you tell people diabetes, obesity, all these things, heart attack, it's just so far away from them. They don't feel like concerned. But then when you start talking about, you know, um, you're not processing information the same way, your mood is changing, you're not productive at work, you can't be as creative, um, you know, all these things, then people say, be like, oh, yeah, I see, I see, I see that. I see the city's happening. I'm slower at work. I'm, I'm, I can't make the right decision because you don't, when you're sleep deprived, it's really difficult to uh, make, you know, wise decision and really think through a problem. Uh, same one comes with like, we've um, realized that when we have trauma, things like that, uh, this is during the REM sleep that actually act, sleep act as a, as a balm and it helps to remove mm -hmm. it, like the age of the event that happens. So it helps us to process event. A, bit, a, a little bit better. Uh, obviously, it's not. It doesn't solve everything. But if you don't sleep, you just don't let your the opportunity for this to happen. 
And it's interesting you said that some entrepreneurs say they only sleep four or five hours. Can you imagine if they got like eight hours of sleep, how much more productive yeah. they would actually be? Yeah. Exactly. And things are changing, though. You see now more and more like CEO, big companies and things that say, I sleep eight hours. I mm-hmm. prioritize my sleep, which I think it's it's a great, uh, it's a you know great message uh, because I think there's only like less than one percent of the population that have a specific gene that enable them to be able to sleep only five hours without damaging their health. But it's barely like no one. Yeah. That's the thing, right? Um, so yeah, definitely need at least seven hours between seven and nine hours. Again, you need to know yourself. Some people like. 30 minutes can change everything. I, For myself, I know I need 8 or 8.30. You know, mm-hmm. if I sleep 7 or 7 and a half, you would be like, oh, that's good. It's like, I not know that's big. good, but I'm not <laughs> at my peak. I, I just know that. Yeah. I, I feel it. So you just try to uh, make sure you know exactly how much uh, you need per night. Can I ask really quickly? So, you, so we each kind of have a sweet spot for how many hours we need, mm. and I definitely get that. Is there any... Like you said, having a consistent wake up time and bedtime obviously Mm. helps. Is there any research about a better wake up time and bedtime? So, for example, here in Singapore, the sun rises at seven, right? Mm. It's seven to seven here. That's when the sun sets, that's when the sun rises. Is there something to getting your wake up time closer to seven, you know, closer to sunrise? Is there something? Yeah, it, it does. Obviously, you know, because back in the day, that's what we used to do, like long, long time ago, you know, mm. we will align our sleep with, you know, the sunrise, the sunlight, all these things. So, and also there's a thing like the sleep that you get before midnight is really powerful. Mm. That's the thing, right? So if you go to bed at midnight and you sleep until eight, you'll be like, oh, okay, I've got my eight hours of sleep. But those, the quality before midnight, it's, it's much stronger. It had like a double of your deep sleep. That's what we say, like, you know, in the sleep industry, like it really uh, can't double. So it's better to go to bed at 10 and, you know, waking up at six than do it like a midnight at eight. Mm-hmm. Now, some people are like night hall, some people are early morning. So you can't constant, you can't completely change how your body function. Do you know what I mean? It's just trying to be aware of like, if you're night hall, don't go at 2 a.m. though. Do you know, it's just, you probably will need to work on your secret and rhythm and trying to put it back a little bit. Um, but yeah, that sleep before midnight is really, um, it's really powerful. I love, I love that there's science behind that because one of the just colloquialisms that I always tell my clients is make sure you go to bed and wake up in different days. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so like if it's already tomorrow, yeah. it's too late. It's too late. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I like that yeah. one. Actually. Yeah, it's an easy yeah. one to remember. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. So it's really weird uh, you're talking about the chronotypes because my husband's a night owl. Yeah. And I'm a morning person. I usually feel like we're on like two different time zones, but I can go to bed early, wake up early, and feel great. And he definitely struggles if I try to get him to go to, if I try to get him to go to bed earlier. Um, uh, but he will definitely need to sort of sleep in longer as well because he can't function at the same sort of level as me. For you, what would you say is the sort of biggest contributor to poor sleep for most people? Oh, there's many. Um, probably like uh, pre bedtime, you know, uh, wrong, ha- um, wrong sleep hygiene. So like, you know, a bit like lifestyle, you know, alcohol, caffeine, all that things. Uh, but stress, stress mm-hmm. is a big one with my client. Um, have people having a lot in their mind, a busy mind. Like many people really uh, struggle to switch off at night. So that that is the that is a big one. It's like, you know, it just, people have bad habit around sleep. Um, and you know, stress. Yeah, stress is definitely the biggest one. But that's like by stress, you actually you mean kids, right? So like that's a <laughs> yeah. euphemism for kids yeah. or no? kids work. But yeah, definitely kids. And but it's probably um, main. I'm guessing the stress thing tends to be mainly women, especially. So, well, men men stress too. But I would say women probably yeah. more. And it for whatever reason, it really shows up in our, in our ability to sleep properly. And um, as women, it's like. Our hormones as well like yeah. really it's just change it throughout the, the month um and it's good to remember nobody sleep well through the night every night mm-hmm. like you know it's it's people want to be like oh i want to sleep perfectly every night it doesn't happen you know it's also it's okay to wake up in the middle of the night if you go back to sleep like within 20 minutes mm-hmm. it's nothing to be worried about you know you don't what you don't want either is create like sleep anxiety and that's my thing about sleep hygiene which i as much as i think it's a good basic for everyone sleep hygiene is not going to cure insomnia people having a strong insomnia probably already done 
good sleep hygiene. They have, they have them doing all the right thing. And sometimes it can create even more stress to be like, oh, I had a little bit of alcohol. It means I'm not going to sleep. Or, you know, I went to bed a bit later. And you don't want to create that as well because you also want to enjoy your life, you know? So you don't want to put too much pressure on you have to sleep well every night. And again, even if you don't sleep well, it's okay. You're going to be okay the next day. We're all built to be able to sleep through the night properly and to cope with a little bit of a lack of sleep the next day. So let's not try to make it perfect. It's a bit like exercising, eating. You, you don't have to eat perfectly well every day to be healthy. It's okay to have some little moment or you enjoy yourself. If you, The point is to always go back on track. So, yeah. So for you, you said that you would sort of wake up around 3 a.m. Yeah. and then struggle to back, get back to sleep. Mm. What steps did you take to sort of help you break that habit if it's a habit or that issue or whatever it was that was causing you to wake up at 3 a.m. and then you know well for me uh that was stress and anxiety it took me years to understand because I don't feel stress during the day mm. I, I just I just don't feel it um but obviously uh I can see it with, you know, when you track your sleep and things like that, you can actually see your level of like stress and everything. But um, it's just addressing that during the day. For me, that's always been like, and also not not, what, not looking at the watch, like the clock. That's the worst thing you can do. If you wake mm-hmm. up in the middle of the night and you look at what time is it, you're going to start the stress, <laughs> the stress yeah. things again. Yep, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I've only got like two or three more hours. What if I don't fall asleep in the next 10 minutes? Gonna, I'm going to be terrible the next day. I'm not going to be able to perform my work and all that thing. So don't look at the clock. And I always try and remember myself, like, it's okay. It's just okay to wake up. I will go back to sleep. I will be fine tomorrow. So obviously there's deeper work you have to do. Like someone, you know, wake up every day at 3 a.m. for like a month definitely have to work on that on you know the sick of them with them everything making sure what they're doing during the day they're doing the right thing are they exercising enough moving their body doing the thing during the day that you know um so it's there's a lot of things to there's not a quick answer do you know what i mean because mm-hmm. it's highly personal and that's why when i use human design it gives me access to um there's we have all have different center and they are uh, related to different um, aspects of our life. So, for instance, the root center, uh, which is there at the chakra at the bottom, um, we can see how people manage stress and pressure. So, people that for them it's defined, they actually manage the stress better than others, which means, okay, sometimes I feel a bit more stressed, but usually it's like this. Mm-hmm. People for who is open, like me, I go like this. Oh. There's no like, a, you know, a baseline that is quite steady. So that that's the thing I really have to work on. Um, then I can look at your head chakra, your head, throat, uh, hashna, and if it's defined, it means that there's a lot of activation in your mind. And that's, for instance, a client that oh, so much in their mind at night and they can't fall asleep, but they are built to have a lot in their mind. So now it's like, how can we work with that? How can we work with your busy mind during the day to make sure at night you're capable of switching it off? So I can see one of the centers called the spleen is your human uh, human system. Do you have a more like um, is your human system you're more prone to get sick and you need more self care than others? So someone has defined spleen is usually have a stronger human system. So they they need self care but not as much as someone that has an open spleen. So it's all these different things that I look at in your in your in your human design and they give me a bit of an overview an overview of like who you are, and then I would, I'll combine that with what you do. Uh, and then I just trying to understand like where the slip uh, issue comes from. It's all so fascinating. Um, on the sort of flip side, are there any supplements that you either take or recommend that can help people who are struggling with sleep? You can still take magnesium, but I would say that I'm trying to not make people dependent on anything when it comes to sleep. Like melatonin, some people like take melatonin every night. But if you take melatonin every night, your body is not then producing it naturally, mm. you know. And then when you don't have your melatonin, you probably start like you know stressing. I'm not going to be able to sleep. So I'm not against all of these things, but you have to be aware that you don't want to become dependent on anything. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. we are all capable of be able to sleep. So we don't need this thing. It's nice to have them sometime if we feel a bit stressed and things like. Okay, take some magnesium. You know, it will relax you and help you. But you don't want to be dependent on that. That's great. And, you know, I feel like you've given us so much 
information, so much wisdom, and obviously all this information on human design, which I had never really <laughs> heard of before. So it's been it's been a real pleasure. So thank you so much. But before we say goodbye, yes, we do have one final question, and that is, what's your forties formula? What would you say to people out there who are listening, who are struggling with sleep? Um, what can they do? And what steps can they take to really sort of optimize their health? So, you know, what's the what's your forties formula? Well, when it comes to sleep, I would say like, you know, self care, making sure, you know, you exercise, you eat healthy, uh, don't drink too much alcohol, you know, limited caffeine and all that thing. Make sure you have a real sleep um, bedtime routine. Uh, but just yeah, really be aware of like prioritizing your sleep because when you when you do, uh, that really enhance everything in your life, you know. And but also, be, we all have a period of time where we not sleep well. It's up to everyone. We're all stressed with work, the kids, personal thing. So let's not just try focus on you know when something like this happen when you don't sleep well. Trying to be oh now I can't sleep. You know, it's happened to everyone. So just move on and you're going to, you know, go back and have a good sleep. So Sleep resilience. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> you will sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been so lovely having you here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Helen. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Guys, you know how much we love coffee. And if you want to show us some love, you know, you can get us one. Just visit buymeacoffee.com slash the 40s formula. Cheers. Listener 12490397840 left us this review after Natalie Dow's episode. 345? Wow, what? Love the Aussie accent feature. So amazing to hear these stories from amazing women. And thank you, user 12490397840. We promise we'll keep the Aussie accents coming for you. Before we go, please remember to hit subscribe and take a moment to support The 40s Formula by leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your reviews will help us to reach more people and allow us to continue to bring valuable content. It should only take a moment and it's a free way for you to support the show. You can also stay updated with The 40s Formula by following us on Instagram at The 40s Formula, all one word. We share behind the scenes insights, episode updates, and much more. So please be sure to hit that follow button. We appreciate your time and support. Thank you for being part of this community. And we'll be back next week for more empowering conversations with inspiring guests. Bye. Bye. lovely thank yeah. you so much for for all that wisdom i feel like it'll be so reassuring for people to hear that yeah. it's like all is it's not so lost. funny because i've got so much i want to share but you know when you're in, in the moment yeah you know you're like oh, how can i put everything you know yeah, properly? It, it's always the way it's always the way should i do an underneath thing yeah. oh yes yes uh, there we go it's a bit of a uh, limbo yeah. <laughs> you, you grab your bag and then i'll sneak out